All right, here comes part two of DNA replication for AP Bio. And you'll want a couple of things out in front of you. You'll want some, some notebook paper or just like printer paper. You'll want some colored pencils or markers or some type of different colored pens or pencils or something like that to, to illustrate all this stuff. And you'll also want to recognize that I'm going to be going rather fast here because I'm not going to like sit and pause and wait for you. That's going to be up to you guys to hit the pause button and then try to catch up with my drawings. So I've kind of replicated some drawings throughout here and it's saved me a lot of time in the presentation time, but you're going to want to pause throughout here and try to, you know, catch up. So get your materials ready. I'm going to, you know, you go ahead and hit the pause button until you're ready with the materials and then we'll move forward here. All right. So I'm going to get moving forward. The next frame here, these are the enzymes that are going to be involved in DNA replication. So we're going to replicate, we're going to copy our DNA, and this is a list of the enzymes. So write them down, and then as we go through this whole thing, you're going to cover them in the upcoming picture. So you're going to have to write notes on this too and on that piece of paper that you're hopefully drawing on. So these are the major enzymes. Now you can tell that they're enzymes because they end in ACE. And remember, enzymes also are named after the things that they work upon. So like helicase, topoisomerase, primase, all of those things have names specific to them because of their roles, because of what they do. So pause again here if you need to catch up. I'm going to move forward, but you'll need to write down, down those terms first, and then we'll start using them throughout our drawings. So moving forward. Here we go. The first thing I want to talk about is this thing called the replication bubble and helicase. So in general, an idea here is this, and I'm going to try to hold this up here. Sorry for my camera work and my up close face there. Um, ultimately, if you have a, a stretch of DNA, it is going to be, you know, your general idea here is that DNA is that double helix. I'm going to lay it out on its side here and kind of draw this as best as I can. Well, that's not so bad, right? So I'm implying that the sides here, again, are made out of um, sugars and phosphates, and that if I drew little lines across here, if I drew these little lines across here, that that would be implying that this, those would be made up of two chemicals at a time. Each line, each rung would be made up of an A and a T or a C and a G. So that's our general idea here. Now, when DNA replicates, when it, when it actually copies itself, if you were to design it or I were to design it, it would be nice and easy if we started at an end and we just said, all right, let's just unzip this thing, let's pull it apart, and let's make copies as we just kind of roll along. But DNA is way too long. you got to remember that these things are thousands and thousands of base pairs long. So, you know, it's not just one rung or two rungs or three rungs or four or five. It's literally like chromosome number one is something like... Um, Oh, like 37,000 base pairs long or 120,000 base pairs long. It is ridiculously long stuff. And so what happens here is um, these enzymes don't work at the ends. What they do is they collectively work at a place called the replication bubble. And there's multiple bubbles along the whole thing, all doing the same exact thing all at the same time. So there's an enzyme that comes along called helicase, helicase. And that enzyme is used to basically wedge into the DNA and basically pry it apart and pop it open like a bubble. So it's going to look something like this. So I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm shortening a lot of this stuff here, but um, ultimately the DNA is going to be going along, do, 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 do. And then all of a sudden there's going to be a wedge in there and it's going to push that DNA open and then it's going to continue its little string this way, okay? So again, the wedge pushes this open so the, the DNA flaps kind of come apart from each other. Now, I have used, or I have illustrated in here, I have tried to use here as best I can, this little green triangle. It is going to represent helicase. So there's going to be helicase at each wedge here, okay, at each place. And it's going to be pushing in these directions. So it's going to be pushing along. This one is working in this direction. And this one is working in this direction. It's going that way. Okay. Now, um, a couple of terms here. This thing here, this area where it's working, is called the replication fork. So get used to that term, replication fork, because it's like a fork in the road, right? Um, and there's two replication forks. There's another one here too, right? And then this overall structure here, this big, you know, it's it's kind of looped out and it's loosened up from each other is called the replication bubble. 
So that is the replication bubble because it actually looks like a bubble underneath a microscope when we got really good microscopes on these things. And what it's done is it is pulled apart, helicase snaps apart the bonds that held the nucleic acids together. So what we've done here is we have taken where these were rungs, where these were steps, and it just pops them open, kind of like a zipper, right? So it opens those up and it exposes one side and the other side. So it just basically pops this thing open. So all of this, and I'm not going to draw it on every single drawing that we have here, but all of this has individual nucleic acids that were once bonded with its partner across the way. So in other words, and I'll use the pointer here, let's say this was an A, this then was a T. They were paired together, but helicase popped them open. And if this was a C, then this one here was a G, and so on, okay? So helicase's main job is to unzip and unwind the DNA. And it will do it somewhere in the middle of the DNA structure. So as we look at this entire structure up here, and we have to imagine that it goes on for a long time over here and it goes on for a long time over here, it just basically randomly picks a point in the middle and it says, we're gonna start here, and it starts to push the bubble both ways. So it keeps opening it up, okay? So that's helicase, that's the first step. I'll let you get caught up with the drawing there. I'm gonna move forward to the next thing. Okay, so I've got kind of a drawing here and I've got kind of the idea here. Um, and I'm starting to label some other parts as well. So right now I have labeled that there's a three prime end of this and it's gonna come into play here very shortly. But I wanted to keep you, you know, reminding you that there is, an, there is a three prime end still and a five prime end. And if I follow this three prime end, I'm gonna choose a different color just so we can see this. If I follow this strand along, that means that if I get over here, that that side over there, and this is the confusing part for students, think about it, pause it and think about it. That side has to be the five prime end then. And if I do the other, uh, the same thing on this side, if this is five prime here and I follow it along, and most of you are like, yep, I get that part right now. So you follow that along and it goes over here. That means that this is the three prime end. So remember there's that anti-parallel nature still going on here. Now, if I take my DNA model here, um, I'm going to hold this up in front of the camera here a little bit, realize that this DNA model is it's pretty stable, it's pretty happy the way that it is. Structurally, it holds together pretty well. But if I was to take this thing and start to pull apart the inside pieces here, like all of these greens and yellows that you might see right here. So I pulled these apart. If I start pulling these apart and pulling these strands apart from each other, much like we see in our, in our diagram here, if I pull those two strands apart from each other, but I keep the ends anchored, well, what ends up happening? If you've ever tried to like coil a, a garden hose or an electrical uh, cord, you realize pretty quickly that if you uncoil in the middle, there's stress on either end. And that stress can get really, really, you know, tightly torqued and bound. And so an enzyme comes along, and that enzyme is called topoisomerase, topoisomerase. That enzyme comes along, it's going to get stressed. This whole thing is going to get stressed everywhere that helicase is working. And remember, it continues to work in this direction. And as it continues to drive that way, and as this one continues to drive this way, topoisomerase is going to do something really fantastic. It is going to snip the DNA, so it's going to cut it. It's going to hold on to it. It's going to cut it. Then it's going to let it spin in place. So it's going to, it's going to have this DNA. It's going to grab, grab onto it. It's going to snip it. And then that DNA is going to uncoil because all that stress on it. So it's going to, it's going to spin. And then the topoisomerase is going to glue it back together again once it's uncoiled. So topoisomerase's job is to uncoil the tension on DNA as it's unwinding and unzipping. Now I haven't put another topoisomerase over here, but we can imply that one is always working over here, okay? So that's step two, all right? I'll let you get your notes and get filled in on that and moving forward. All right, so we have um, we have our helicase here. We've got our topoisomerase here. I'm gonna focus on this end. There's gonna be another topoisomerase here. I haven't drawn it in, but you can go ahead and draw that one in. And step three is an enzyme called primase. And primase is an enzyme that's gonna come along. We're gonna identify it as like a little uh, orange blob here or a reddish blob. Um, and it's going to come along and it's going to grab onto both sides, one each. It's going to grab onto both sides and it's going to lay down a starter strip of RNA. 
RNA is a little bit different than DNA. Remember that RNA has um, a different sugar, has uh, ribose instead of deoxyribose, and it in includes A's, U's, C's, and G's. It doesn't have thymine. It has uh, uracil instead. So it's still the same pairing rules, A with U, C with G. If there's a T on the DNA ladder, it's going to pair up an A. If there's an A, it's going to pair up a U because it can't, there's no T available. Okay. Now, the key here to understanding, and pause when you need to, the key here to understanding is that it's going to lay down new RNA in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction. So the new stuff is going to go 5' prime to 3'. Prime, all right. So we have to think about that. Um, this means that if I look at this piece over here, I've got my five prime end over here. Now I know that that's the original DNA and I follow this along and my original DNA, this is five prime and three prime. So as I'm going along here, remember that five prime then is always facing this way. And that three prime is always facing this way on my template strand. That means if I build a new strand over here, if I build a new strand, and I'll use red for my color here for primase. If I build a new strand, that means that it's going to build in this direction because this side is going to be 5 prime and this side is going to be 3 prime. So it's going to build a primer in that direction and it's going to be pairing up with the opposite side correctly, like A's with U. Uh, a over here with U and T with A and C with G and G with C. It's just going to keep pairing it up correctly. Okay, so that's primase. Now, again, the confusing part is, oh, wait a second, this whole 5 prime, 3 prime thing, I thought it made sense and now it doesn't make sense. Remember, this is the template strand here. So this part here is the template strand. This way would be 5 prime and this way over here would be 3 prime. I'll put it over here. That way would be 3 prime. That means on the opposite side, on the new strand that's going to be built, and I'll, I'll just point out, we're building a new strand right here. We're building a new strand right there. On the new strand, it's going to be flipped. Remember, it's anti-parallel. So the new strand is going to be built in a 5 prime to 3 prime direction. And RNA uh, primase, or primase, lays down about 5 to 10 RNA pieces there just to get things started. On the opposite side, realize down here, on the opposite side, if we follow the same thinking here, here's three prime. Three prime is to our left, okay, and five prime is to our right. So three prime is to our left, and five prime is to our right on this strand. Um, which way will it be building? Well, it's going to build the opposite way because it's going to be opposite. Remember, anti-parallel, because this side now is going to be five prime. And the new strand is going to be three prime on that side as well. And so it's going to be building along and it's going to be making a primer there. Again, the primer is just there to keep things going. Okay. So, or to get things started. So primase gets things started by laying down primer five prime to three prime direction. All right. I'm going to pause there. I'm going to actually stop this video and I'm going to move on to a different part.